Coordination problems arise in a variety of economic, social, and political situations. These situations can be modeled as coordination games, as illustrated by the following examples. Imagine two cars are driving down a road toward one another and will soon meet. Each driver can choose to stay to his right or to his left to avoid the other car. Since they are facing opposite directions, if both drivers choose to stay to their right or if both choose to stay to their left, they will end up on opposite sides of the road and they will avoid hitting each other. However, if one chooses left while the other chooses right, they will end up on the same side of the road and collide. This scenario illustrates the classic coordination game, which refers to a situation where the parties involved can benefit from choosing the same course of action. If both drivers can agree to drive on either the right or the left at all times, they will avoid the accident. This coordination game can be illustrated in a payoff matrix as follows. The strategies for driver one are represented in the rows and those of driver two in the columns. Driver 1's payoff is listed first, and Driver 2's is listed second. The specific payoffs don't matter and are meant to illustrate the relative attractiveness of each option. The negative payoffs capture the fact that if the players fail to coordinate, they'll have an accident, which harms both drivers. If, however, they can coordinate to both drive on the left or right, they will avoid an accident and successfully pass one another, producing a positive payoff. It is important to note that this game has two Nash equilibria, left-left and right-right, illustrated by the highlighted cells. For both of these outcomes, neither player can improve their situation by unilaterally changing their strategy. The central issue in these types of situations is determining mechanisms that allow people to coordinate on one of the two equilibria. How might two drivers both agree to drive on the right side? There are various mechanisms that could potentially work, and we'll discuss some of those in a bit. But before doing that, let's consider some other examples where the logic of the coordination game is applicable. First, consider the adoption of technology and the associated network effects. Network effects, or network externalities, refer to situations where the value of a good or service increases as others adopt it. Examples include the telephone, email, or social media platforms. For example, Having a telephone, if no one else does, is useless because you can't call anyone. The more people who have telephones, the more valuable it becomes to you to have one. A key issue is whether the technology used by different companies is compatible across products. If it is compatible, if say an Android and an iPhone can call each other, then users of different products can interact, which increases the size of the network effect. Companies also benefit from a larger potential customer base. This means that technological compatibility presents a potential coordination problem for companies. If two companies each adopt a technology that is compatible with the products of the other, both firms can increase their total sales. Consumers can then purchase products from either company with confidence that they can be used with the products from the other firm. So both companies see a benefit if they adopt the same technology, regardless of which technology option it is. As in the opening example, this situation has two Nash equilibria, and both are equally good. If, however, the companies select two different technologies for their products, they will be incompatible, and the sales of both firms will be lower. Another well-known illustration of a coordination situation is called the battle of the sexes. The scenario is as follows. A couple has plans to meet, but can't remember if they agreed to meet at the theater or at a sporting event. The husband prefers the sporting event, while the wife prefers the theater. However, both would prefer to go together to the same event as a couple instead of being at either event alone. The off-diagonals, 0-0, represent a lack of coordination and the least preferred outcome for both the husband and wife. The husband receives a higher payoff if they attend the sporting event, since that's his top preference. The reverse holds for the wife. The two highlighted equilibria are both Nash equilibria, since neither party has the incentive to change their strategy based on the strategy chosen by the other party. Notice that this coordination scenario is different from the previous examples. In the previous cases, the parties were indifferent between the two Nash equilibria because the payoffs were the same. But in the battle of the sexes scenario, the parties each prefer their top choice. 
So no matter which event they go to together, one person will be less happy than the other. What you need to solve a coordination problem is a mechanism that allows people to create shared expectations about what other people will do. Let's consider two potential mechanisms that would help in the earlier scenarios. One solution is formal standards, which are rules that are codified by certain parties. Standards are rules about how parties are supposed to act. As such, they provide guides for action and interaction. Formal standards can emerge through political or private institutions. For example, government might establish a formal law that all automobiles are to drive on the right-hand side of the road. This law is backed by punishment for deviations from the standard. Where effectively enforced, such formal standards can solve coordination situations, such as the problem facing the oncoming cars that we discussed earlier. Formal standards can also be established by private organizations. For example, many industry organizations, such as the American Medical Association or the American Bar Association, establish standards that their members are supposed to uphold. These standards serve as a coordination mechanism by creating codified expectations of how other members will behave. Similarly, private organizations typically develop standards internally to overcome potential coordination problems between employees. A second solution to coordination problems is social conventions, or informal rules. A social convention is a regularity that is followed by people belonging to a group, a shared expectation of the correct way to behave. While formal standards are codified, conventions are emergent in nature, meaning they are not centrally designed and they are usually not written down. Conventions could potentially influence outcomes in all of the examples we have discussed. Drivers might choose a certain side of the road based on historical experience, even without laws in place. Companies might select a technology based on the past behaviors of other companies or by other indicators sent by firms as to the technology they will adopt. For example, a company might write a press release, hire certain talent, or acquire a certain company to indicate to others what technology they are adopting. The husband and wife might rely on a convention to determine which event to attend. For example, perhaps they always alternate so if they attended a sporting event last week, they'll attend the theater this week. In general, appreciating the role that social conventions play in creating social harmony is crucial to understanding how people solve a wide variety of coordination problems. <laughs>